number nine. Saw nine. Now, this pitch was done by Mark, and it was filmed right around back in 2017, I believe. And to be quite honest, it's one of the more really good ideas I've heard for a direction of a Saw franchise. If you get a chance to check out his pitch, go to the link in the description down below and take the time, pause this video. It's about less than 15 minutes long, but it's really engaging. It's a really great idea. And Mark, I want to bring you in here. So one of the ideas of this pitch right here is the use of the Jigsaw Rules website and how you incorporate that into the film as well as future characters who are fans of Jigsaw leading the charge for this next pitch idea for a film. So my question to you is this. What inspired you to use the Jigsaw Rules website for this pitch idea? Well, you know, like you said, I did this pitch a couple years back, uh, right around the time when J uh, Jigsaw was actually being released. And I think you and I were doing the retrospective series then, and we just got on these weird tangents about how back when Saw 3D was coming out and the, you know, the official ending they had that I think there was the shooting script where they kind of said that the survivor group was now the worshippers of Jigsaw, the people who were going to take up the legacy, and people who had somewhat of an interaction with him but didn't really know him uh, individually, but they were going to continue the work, his disease is spreading. I hated that idea, but with Jigsaw, the concept of these fanboys and fangirls fawning over John Kramer as if he was this universe's, I don't know, Ted Bundy or all these other serial killers that have so much fame. And the idea of exploring that a little bit more and seeing how people really kind of interacted with his philosophy, emulating it in one way or another, is what really intrigued me about this idea and why I decided to kind of pitch it the way I did. Absolutely. And just goes to show you, like, even the film Jigsaw, that it's a simple, like, you know, two or three sentences of dialogue. And you could take, like, a simple, like, two or three sentences from a movie and turn it into a whole different pitch into a concept which is really inspiring and so i guess my next question would be is taking that idea based off from the movie jigsaw from the jigsaw rules website and i really like that you actually incorporate the scott tibbs documentary into this story as we hear in the beginning of the pitch and to where scott tibbs was inspired the use of the jigsaw rules website could you go a little more details of what your thoughts were of the scott tibbs documentary and how important that could be leaning into your story? Well, I feel like one of the things I said was, oh, you know, I feel like Scott Tibbs is somewhat of a deep cut, but not that deep of a cut in terms of the fandom. I feel like a lot of people wouldn't know exactly who he is if you've just only watched the movies a couple times. Uh, so to give everyone some idea of who Scott Tibbs is, he's Adam's friend that he talks about in the first movie. And then we see Daniel Matthews wearing one of Scott Tibbs' band shirts throughout Saul 2. So it's just like this little Easter egg throughout the entirety of the franchise. And then there's this fan-made film that was released with the home releases back when we had them on DVD, where they had a guy play Scott Tibbs trying to figure out what happened to Adam and getting really obsessed with John's legacy or what, you know, Jigsaw did, putting himself into a trap. And it was interesting to me that he was filming himself and kind of making this documentary or whoever got a hold of it was making the documentary. And I thought it would be really fun to take that concept and also take over the concept that John and his apprentices throughout the entire franchise have been watching these traps. Maybe they're just watching them, but they're filming them. And we see in Saul 6 with the, you know, they recorded them, Hoffman's recorded them and listening to it afterwards of the cold opening trap. And all of that stuff is kind of archived and would have found its way online somehow onto the Jigsaw Rules website, and I felt like this was a really cool deep cut, but also reintroduction to the franchise where you can satisfy longtime fans, but also give a little bit of an inclination as to what the whole story is going to be about right at the beginning. I completely agree. Like I said, I really enjoyed the Scott Tibbs Dockery myself. Maybe somebody needs to bring him back. <laughs> Having said that, now, one of the lead characters, the lead character of your pitch for this film is the character of Eleanor Bonneville, played by Hannah Emily Anderson. And based on the work I've seen with her, you know, she's an actress who can definitely, you know, carry the load for any franchise. Having seen, like, a bunch of horror films that she's in, or even TV series she was in, such as The Purge. Mm -hmm. So, why don't you talk about the Eleanor character and what she'll mean to you going forward in this film as your lead main character for the film? Well, that's 
kind of where I was going with her characters. Kind of going back to basics, I put them in the Saw 2 house or something pretty akin to it. And I felt like going back and allowing characters to kind of interact with each other and not getting too big for its britches would be the best way to help help develop her character since she only got it like seven minutes of screen time in Jigsaw. And the reason why I'm kind of casting her as not only the lead for this film, but also maybe the main lead going forward and if they were to ever go in this direction, which I guess they're not, but is essentially the reason why I'm focusing on the Jigsaw Rules website, Scott Tibbs, and everything else we've talked about. John's legacy is more interesting to me if it's taken by someone who had no interaction with him. I didn't like Spiral all that much in comparison to some other people, I'm sure yourself included, but I did like the fact that William Shank's character had no interaction with Jigsaw. He just kind of understood what John was getting at, even though I feel like he's bastardized it, which everyone does. But it would be interesting to me, like someone with Eleanor's background and her admiration for John to come in and get it more than anybody else and just kind of maneuver her way into that legacy instead of having some kind of interaction with him or relationship with John, kind of in a way, I, I guess around the same time I pitched this, it would be in the way that Ray was from The Last Jedi before they kind of retcon that with Rise of Skywalker. It's like, you know, this is a girl who, from nowhere, she's nobody, but yet she kind of inches her way into this story, into this legacy, and becomes one of the main players in it, I thought was a more interesting idea than just somebody having known John like Logan. Right. Well, like I said, it's a very interesting pitch. Like It's something that I hope they consider down the line. Uh, bringing her back because, like, again, she's one of my favorite characters as well as one of yours as well as many others. If you haven't got a chance to check this pitch out, go ahead click the link in the description below and come back tomorrow. We are looking forward to continuing Sawtober this year. And stay tuned tomorrow for number eight.